The Front Room is a psychological horror film that attempts to explore the claustrophobic tension within a young couple's home when they take in an estranged and elderly family member. The film is based on a short story of the same name by Susan Hill. Both versions revolve around a young couple who take in an elderly relative with unsettling consequences as they struggle to balance their everyday lives with the increasing demands of their unwelcome guest, the line between compassion and fear begins to blur, leading to unsettling consequences. However, the film adaptation and the original short story differ in tone, style, and the way they present the horror elements. The film falls short by overindulging in what some might call woke rhetoric specifically an exaggerated focus on racism that often feels forced and unnecessary to the narrative. The problem is exacerbated by the fact that these discussions of race often feel disconnected from the main plot. Instead of weaving these elements organically into the fabric of the narrative, the film stops dead in its tracks to make its point, pulling viewers out of the suspense and into what feels like an after-school special. For a horror film, which thrives on immersion and atmosphere, this approach is particularly damaging. Additionally, the characters who bring up these social issues often do so in a way that feels unnatural, as if they were inserted into the script to serve as mouthpieces for the filmmaker's views, rather than as fully realized individuals with their own motivations. This reduces their complexity and makes it difficult for the audience to fully invest in their plight directed and written by Max and Sam Eggers. The Front Room is the latest addition to the growing list of indie horror films that prioritize atmosphere over substance. Despite the promising concept and the established talents behind the camera, the film ultimately falls flat, leaving much to be desired in terms of both narrative and emotional impact. The Eggers brothers, making their directorial debut together, show flashes of their potential with a keen eye for eerie visuals and a slow burn tension. However, their inexperience is evident in the film's pacing and character development. While their older brother Robert Eggers has mastered the art of psychological horror with a film like The Witch, Max and Sam seem to struggle with balancing style and substance. The film often feels like it's treading water with long, drawn-out scenes that fail to build the necessary suspense. Any tension or suspense that the film is able to start building is then disrupted by heavy-handed attempts to inject social commentary, particularly on issues of race. From the beginning, the film seems more interested in making statements about racial dynamics than in telling a coherent story. Characters frequently engage in dialogues that feel more like lectures, awkwardly shoehorned into scenes where the focus should be on building suspense. In the front room, Themes of racism are presented in such a way that they overshadow the story, coming off as preachy rather than insightful. The cinematography by Ava Burkowski is one of the film's stronger aspects. The camera work effectively captures the oppressive atmosphere of the home, with dim lighting and tight framing that accentuates the character's isolation. The film's visual style draws clear inspiration from classic horror utilizing shadows and eerie compositions to create a sense of dread. However, even the most visually striking scenes lack the impact needed to make them memorable, as they are undercut by the film's meandering plot. Brandy Norwood and Andrew Burnap lead the cast as the young couple, struggling to maintain their sanity under the strain of their new living arrangement. Norwood delivers a solid performance, bringing a quiet intensity to her role that conveys her character's growing unease. Burnap, on the other hand, seems miscast, failing to fully embody the tension and paranoia required for his character's arc. Meanwhile, Catherine Hunter, as the elderly relative, is underutilized, her performance hindered by a script that doesn't allow her to fully explore the complexities of her character. A 24, known for producing standout horror films including Hereditary and Midsommar, disappoints with the front room. The production values are high, with detailed set designs that enhance the film's claustrophobic atmosphere, but the overall execution feels lackluster. The film's attempt to blend psychological horror with family drama never fully gels, leading to a final product that is less than the sum of its parts. The score, composed by Marcelo Zarvos, is another highlight, 
with its minimalist, haunting melodies that underscore the film's unsettling tone. However, much like the cinematography, the music struggles to elevate the material. The score builds tension in scenes that ultimately fail to deliver a satisfying payoff, leaving the audience feeling more frustrated than frightened. While the film adaptation of The Front Room remains faithful to the core plot and themes of Susan Hill's short story, it necessarily adapts the material to suit the visual and auditory nature of cinema. The horror is more immediate and pronounced, catering to modern audience expectations while exploring the same underlying fears of intrusion and the uncanny. The short story, on the other hand, remains a classic example of psychological horror, with its power lying in its subtlety and the slow, creeping sense of dread it instills. The Front Room is a film that is neither a successful horror movie nor a meaningful exploration of racial issues. Instead, it ends up as a muddled mix of both, failing to deliver on its promise in either domain. For viewers hoping for a gripping thriller, the film's overemphasis on being woke might be more frustrating than thought-provoking. I give this film 2 out of 5 stars. The film definitely has potential, but it fails to live up to the standard set by other A24 horror entries. Despite some strong visuals and an atmospheric score, the film is let down by a sluggish pace, underdeveloped characters, and a lack of narrative cohesion. For fans of slow burn horror, it may offer some moments of interest, but overall, The Front Room is a disappointing entry in the genre.